local girl club um, for bringing that heart into the So I want to just briefly mention um, the work of Local Globo. They are a local San Francisco organization and they give free um, music classes to youth. Um, they do after school work. They work with the community, they collaborate with other organizations, and they've definitely collaborated with anti-violence organizations. So um, I felt like it was really important to, because this is what GirlFest does, to bring them with us today to really open up this conference to kind of create that energy and that, that unity of everybody in this room together and our hearts are being at the same time. So I'm really, really glad that they could come. to think about um, that drum beat as a little bit of a metaphor because as we walk through our lives there's all kinds of actions that that we make and each of those reverberates out so if we think about negative actions there's so many reverberations there's so many effects of those actions and in a community of folks who work with survivors we understand that and we understand how far reaching the negative effect can be. But I think what we often forget to think about is how far reaching a positive reverberation can be. And so part of what I wanted to do was really make that connection between these, these drummers unifying us together in this amazing moment that's powerful and we're all dancing and clapping and we're having this moment and we need to do things like this more often and make those positive reverberations because if we create a cultural unity we can do that and we can have a change on our culture. So I just kind of wanted to bring them here and remind us all of that. Um, part of what I wanted to just briefly talk about, and I'm not going to take a lot of time because I know we may be running a little bit late, is uh, how we can affect change in our culture. I just want to kind of get a sense of the room. How many, how many people, if you could just raise your hand or not or acknowledge in some way, have a television? And how many of you watch it? Okay. Um, how many people in the last week or so have looked at a magazine? How many people have walked by a billboard? Okay. And how many people, this one, this question you may have to think about a little bit more before you raise your hand, but how many people have um, either overheard or been part of a conversation that in some way referenced um, sexual harassment, sexual violence, in a way that was offensive to them. Like in the last week or so, okay. Um, and I, I just, I'm asking you these questions because I, I really want to kind of bring us home to this reality that we live in a culture that's very violent. Um, I know we all know that, obviously that's why we're here. But the fact is we can work with survivors and we can, we can try to make a difference and we can counsel and we can get people support, but ultimately it comes out of our culture and we have to start there. We have to change the culture that we're in because we are absolutely inundated with messages of violence and disrespect and fear. So one of the things that GoFest Bay Area, and I think part of the reason that we were invited to speak here, um, is because one of the things that we're really trying to do is look at culture and try to celebrate you know, not just criticize the culture, but create a new culture and support people's voices who have things to say that aren't being heard in our mainstream media, that aren't things that you're hearing on television. Um, one of the things that we really believe is that we have to put the survivor's voice at the center of what we hear. Because when all we hear is a perpetrator's voice or a voice of violence all around us all the time, then that voice is lost. And even if we try to support it in a therapy session or in a group session, it's lost in the dominant culture. And so we never end up dealing with our issues. So what we try to do at GrowFest is we invite performers, we invite artists, and we invite survivors. And we really give them a platform to voice their experience in hopes that creating that conflict in our community will make, will make it so that people can acknowledge the violence and find some ways to solve the problem. So that's part of what we do at GirlFest. And um, I'm not sure um, how much of you, if you've read the program or if you know about it, so I'll just speak briefly about what it is. Um, it's an organization that is, um, our mission is to prevent violence against women and girls through education and art. And we do that through an annual festival. It was started in Hawaii. 
um, in, in Honolulu and just as a kind of reaction to all of the intense violence that women were experiencing on the island. Um, there's also a naval base there and that comes with its own implications. So um, there was a lot of really um, intense things going on and people felt the need to really organize and speak out. So the executive director, Catherine Gian, um, began to organize with a bunch of other folks who were committed and put together this speak out event. And it became an annual festival and then came to the Bay Area as well, which is where I got involved. So what we do is we have performance, we have both professional performers like Local Bloco, who are organizations that do community work, and we also invite individual artists to be part of that as sort of a draw, to bring people in and get them interested, and then we connect them with direct services, and we have those important and hard conversations about why is our culture so violent and what are we going to do about it. The other thing we do is give workshops um, so that people can learn how to express um, their voices. So we'll do writing workshops and um, poetry, some dance, sometimes self-defense, um, whatever seems to be pertinent for that local community. So enough about Girl Fest. Um, so I guess uh, one of the things I want to talk about a little bit within that, within the arts and education, because I know that this conference is really focused on the prevention aspect of our work, and I think that um, as an artist, I'm really kind of coming here to say that I think we really need to use the arts and we really need to engage that as both a method of healing and a method of community togetherness and kind of a way to holistically fix what's wrong um, with all of the violence in our communities. So um, one of the words that I often use for art is cultural production. Um, it's an alternative term that I think is um, sort of more effective for me to describe the things that people make. Um, when I say cultural production, I'm acknowledging that art doesn't come out of a vacuum. It comes out of a culture, and it comes um, from, from deep-rooted values, from traditions that have been passed on, and so wherever you're coming from, you're bringing different cultural work to the table when you make art. So I think that that's also really important in using the arts to do prevention work, is to recognize that the arts that you're using need to be culturally relevant and they need to come out of um, something that you know, has a, a deep rootedness and an importance in whatever community that is taking place. I kind of want to put that out there. So I, I don't want to take up too much more time, but I, I do want to just say, I don't think that Girlfest was invited here because we're experts. I certainly am not an expert. I don't know how to fix the world. But I do think that we were invited here because we're activists and organizers. And I think that when we look at prevention, it takes activism. That's what it takes. And I want everyone in here to really think about being an activist and the fact that you are all activists. I think that the term activist has been dragged in the mud. You know, I think that oftentimes in our uh, mainstream media, the, the portrayal of activists is like crazy people throwing themselves in front of buses to stop something or chaining, chaining themselves to a tree, which is good too, you know, that needs to happen. But I think that that freaks us out a little bit, you know, in terms of claiming that as something are. But I really want to encourage everyone here to really claim that and to say, I am an activist. I'm making a difference in my community, and that's what I'm doing. And it's a good term, and it's something I'm going to inhabit and I'm going to work with. So I just really want to encourage people as they go through the conference to consider themselves an activist and yourselves an activist and, and really to kind of unite in that. And we can make a lot of change and a lot of things happen if we're all positively acknowledging that. So. Um, just to close, I, I want to bring a poet. Um, we have a poet, Sila Geisler, who um, is a spoken word um, poet. She's performed with Girl Festival Hawaii and the Bay Area, and um, she's going to leave you with some poetry. Um, please welcome Sila Geisler. <laughs> 